lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to do some shadow text knockout. So the first thing I need to do is go and grab my text and you can see it's already set to Times New Roman. So for my knockout back text, I want it to be quite a uniform, bold, quite bulky text and this is one of the ones that works really well. And you can see that it's all in capitals and again for your background text you really want it to be in capitals you want a nice chunky bold background text so I am just going to reduce my letter space down we want them to be quite close together without actually touching and if they do see they're overlapping at the top there so we need to bring them back up and then back up again so 0.2 and that works really well that's going to work lovely so I then want to go and get a, another text box now I'm going to use the I love glitter font for this one so I'm going to do an open bracket I'm then going to type my first name I'm then going to do a underscore I'm then going to type my second name and then I'm going to do a closed bracket I can then go up to my font and I can search for I love glitter and you'll see it comes straight up and when I change it I've got those lovely swirls and the middle heart in so I'm just going to again reduce my letter space so that everything is overlapping and I'm then just going to weld it so it's all welded together in place now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and I'm actually going to firstly change the colour of it so just a lilac and I'm then going to change it to print so I need to make sure it's under 9 whatever it is for print and cut which it is so I'm going to go to make it and you'll see it then comes up with the print and cut I'm going to go to continue and I'm going to send to printer now I'm not actually going to send it to the printer at this point but what I am going to do is ensure that the bleed is on so this is the bleed off and this is the bleed on I'm then going to right click and I'm going to save the picture once the picture is saved I can then close this down I can cancel the cut which I want to do and I'm then able to go to upload upload image browse and I can then find my save print and cut picture so you can see that I've now uploaded it and I'm going to select a simple image type and I'm going to go to continue I'm just going to zoom in so that I can see everything I'm just going to go and delete everything and I want to remove that middle B bit there and that little dot there not that it's really going to make any difference and then rather than going around trying to delete these lines I'm just going to select the eraser I'm going to reduce its size down and I'm just going to go in with the eraser and remove that box and I just think it's easier than trying to click a hundred times to remove each part of those lines so once I've done that I can then go to continue and I'm oh I've left a bit in there so I'm just going to go to back and I'm going to zoom in go back to my eraser there we go I'm going to go to continue and I'm going to save as a cut image I can then insert the image into my canvas so the next thing I need to do is rotate it round now you just have to be kind of use the naked eye with this and there is a way that we can kind of make sure it's straight in a moment I'm just going to make it slightly bigger I can now remove this print and cut one and this one I want to change the colour on so I'm going to change it to a lilac and then this one I'm going to change to a grey or a cream so now I've got this piece here and then I need to get this piece and I'm just going to arrange and move to front and I can then go in and make sure that they are pretty much the same so you can see that they're not at the minute 
so I just need to play with the background and get it as straight as I can because at the moment it's not straight I can then go back in with my secondary layer and then I can replay with that and it's just a case of just getting it as close to it as you possibly can and you just have to keep playing with it. It doesn't take very long at all, but it just takes a small amount of tweaking. So once I'm happy with that, I'm then able to highlight both and I can bring them over to my text and I can just size both of my layers and I'm then able to highlight all. I'm just going to align and I'm going to center everything. So I'm then able to remove this writing piece and I'm then left with my slice layer. So I'm then going to highlight all and then I'm just going to slice and this will then slice out my shadow layer for me. So I'm then able to go in with my text in a second. So I'm now left with my slice out so I'm going to bring my text up and I'm just going to work out where it all needs to sit and it should fit in there quite beautifully and I'm really happy with that so the next thing I need to do is then highlight all and I need to then size it up to the size I want it all to be. So once I've sized it, I'm then happy to go to make it. Now I'm putting this on a wood sign today, but I haven't got enough vinyl. So I'm going to do it in iron-on, because I've got great big rolls of black and white iron-on, and I don't want to do it in glitter, and I don't want to do it in metallic. I want it to be quite plain. And I just um, it's just easier if I do it in iron-on today. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go to make it and you'll see that they're both going to go on larger mats which is absolutely fine and I do need to ensure because I'm using iron on that I mirror them. I'm then going to go to continue and I'm just going to send it to my maker today and I'm going to set them both to just normal iron on. So now that's all done, I can go and cut them out. So I've already weeded out my iron-on and I've set this piece onto my wood and I've got my other piece here which will hopefully just fit in there so we'll just be able to do that in a second. Now I'm using the Easy Press today, it's currently heating up and I'm going to have it in degrees Fahrenheit just because that's what I like working with. I'm going to have it at 315 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. Now with the initial press, because you've got the carrier sheet on, you don't need to use a Teflon sheet. But obviously when you take it off and we then put our second layer on, we will need to use a Teflon sheet with that. So my easy press is now completely ready, so I'm just going to grab it. Now, obviously we're working with wood and it's not the size of the easy press, so we are going to have to try and make this work. So I'm just going to place it right on the edge of my piece of wood and then I'm going to try and make sure that there's a nice seal all the way around and then I can press my little green cricket. So the great thing that I love about the Easy Press is you don't really need to exert a huge amount of pressure. You're really just resting it onto your surface, which I absolutely love. So that's the first half done. So I'm then going to go in with my second half. And we're just going to press our little green man. Now I haven't done it on wood with the easy press yet so we'll see how this kind of turns out and in the meantime I'm just going to give that a quick scrape. I've done iron on on wood with an iron but I haven't done it with the easy press yet so it'd be interesting to see how it turns out. 
Now you don't need to scrape, it's just something that I've always done. I used to really struggle with an iron, I just, I really struggled with it and I always found that scraping really helped and it's kind of just a habit that I've gotten into but you don't need to do it. So that is not quite ready yet. It's nearly there, but it's not quite there. So I'm gonna go in with another burst of heat. So I'm now gonna go in with my knockout text and I'm just going to work out where it needs to sit. And that's the great thing about iron-on. Unlike with vinyl, with iron-on you can move it around and that's something that I absolutely love. So I'm happy with that placement. Now I was going to go in with a Teflon sheet but actually my carrier sheet covers most of it. But I have got a little bit here that's kind of on show. So I'm just trying to work out, do I risk it or do I just... Hmm. I think we're going to put a Teflon sheet over just to make sure. Now I assume because the other piece took two goes that this piece is also going to need two goes. But actually it's looking, there we go, so I then want to go in and make sure that that is fully adhered, so I'm then going to go in with a, another press just to make sure that everything is fully adhered to that piece of wood. And I know that that's now ready because I can actually see the wood coming through onto my HTV, which is exactly what you want. It's no different if you're doing it on a piece of fabric. And I can see my wood grain coming through. So that to me shows that it's absolutely adhered on there. <laughs> 